Well, great to see you here tonight for our Wednesday night service. Please take your song books as we begin and turn to number 121. We're going to sing multiple songs just from the song book here tonight. The focus is actually the title of one of the songs, and it's entitled God is Still on the Throne. That's not the first song we're singing. We're singing a song entitled Have Faith in God. The first two songs uh, we've not sung much at all as a congregation. Uh, they've been put in the song book within the last a couple of years. So they're not new songs, but they're new to us. So uh, I trust that you'll be stirred tonight. This is something that God keeps bringing me back to is uh, having the right view of him and uh, not looking at circumstances and then viewing him through that, but looking at God first and letting the circumstances then be seen through the grid of God and his character and who he is. So it starts with getting our eyes on him, have faith in God. And you'll notice have faith in God. He's on his throne. And that's what the chorus says each time that you'll get to it. So let's stand together as we sing 121 in our song books, Have Faith in God. Have faith in God, when your pathway is holy, He sees and knows all the way you have drawn. Never alone, our lonely issues in prayer that cause us not to have the effectiveness that we should have, but one of them that we're going to look at tonight is that we pray about things, but we're really not committing ourselves to be the answer to the prayer that we just prayed. And so often our prayers are going to involve our taking steps of faith to accomplish that prayer. And I think when we understand that, our prayers can really become dynamic. So we're going to look at a great example of that tonight. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, I do pray you'll continue in these uh, times in which we look at the lives of these men and women who sought you, and uh, these men in particular that prayed 
Lord, I pray that uh, you will help us to learn uh, what you did honor and how you did respond when uh, faith was exercised and there was that willingness to truly be used of you. Lord, you are always ready to do great and mighty things. You've said that. If we call upon you, uh, Lord, you're ready to do that. And so, Lord, encourage our hearts tonight. Would you bless in a special way now in this service? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The ushers have the prayer bulletin for today. So if you please raise your hand if you need one as they turn right now and go to the back. You know they'll be glad to put that in your hands this evening. Uh, let me... Uh, encourage you to be praying faithfully for these requests. Have a report from uh, Dr. Dr. Jim's week last week, as well as a couple uh, missionaries. And um, you'll see one. I read that request from Brother Prettyman a few days ago, uh, just um, recognizing what folks go through in some of these uh, these countries that have so much superstition. You will see that request. Um, also pray for uh, our missionaries to Iceland that God will uh, not allow even just the volcanic uh, situation there to keep them from having any issues getting there. Um, so I know that they would greatly appreciate this, uh, that. Also, I do know I failed actually to mention this in my own group tonight. Uh, my class missionary is the Smiths to Columbia, and they're really going through some very hard trials right now, and um, including him having some eye issues where he's almost been blinded a few times. It sounds like it's neurological. They can't figure it out. And they also had a situation where the rent uh, that they paid for six months ahead of time. The person in the middle, middle, uh, the broker, whoever was working, they were working with, stole the money, and they have no premium. And then their car had an awful lot of repair on it. I mean, they've literally gone through one of the most nightmare situations you could go through, and now his health's greatly affected. So if you think of the Smiths, uh, really a dear missionary family. And God's, by the way, at the same time, doing great work, church planning in Columbia, and they're seeing, they're not in an easy area either in Columbia, uh, and uh, a very dangerous place, but yet they just are keep, they're pressing on. Uh, but at the same time, they're, they're suffering terribly. So we would appreciate prayer for them if they're not there but on the list. But I know that they would appreciate prayer. 153. 153. Uh, I did hear that uh, also, I don't think there's a report here. We had to get the prayer bulletin done a little sooner this week. But um, I did hear that some of our folks uh, haven't been able to be in the Milwaukee jail or back in. Um, and so that's a blessing. And I actually had the personal privilege to lead a person to Christ via video call into the Waukesha jail on Friday. Uh, and that's the only way I can get in there uh, if I'm a clergy, if they call that, um, pastor. And so uh, anyway, that, that was the opportunity. They literally video you right into a um, kind of like an area, a common area there where they're all walking around. And uh, so that was that's somebody that's connected to a church family here. So that was a blessing. Um, but uh, those are important ministries. Guys and ladies are at the end of themselves many times or close to the end of themselves, and they definitely need the Lord. So. Uh, keep praying for that, and we've been seeing some real fruit there recently. 153 in your songbook, 153, the song that's entitled, God is Still on the Throne. I remember uh, the last song we just sang, I think it was the third or the fourth verse, talked about even when people you trust fail you, or you get disappointed by some situation, or, you know, there's so many times I remember a, a fellow that um, he came up with, a pastor that he had brought to preach in our school, and and this, this young man was called to be a missionary in the aviation, and he had just, he, he was the last person that had been married by this, by the former pastor who then fell into, or he already had been involved in some very, uh, very immoral behavior and uh, was removed literally the, the Sunday right after the wedding of this young man. And I remember still in his eyes, I could see how shaken he was. And I understand totally. Uh, and I thought, you know what? The true test of the, who this young man is depending on is going to be who he looks to these next few weeks and months and years. By the way, but you know what, though? It also shows how important it is that we walk with God so that those who look to us are not shaken by our failure. Does that make sense? So you can't minimize that, and that was a, that was a tragedy. Uh, but may God help all of us to walk in the Spirit. There's people that look to us, if anything, just our children alone is enough, right? But then uh, all the disciples and people that God's put in, in, in our lives. But regardless of what man does, God is still on the throne. And I love how this chorus says, he's still on the throne and he remember, will remember his own. Though trials may press us and burdens distress us, he, he never will leave us alone. And uh, that, that's so true. And that's something I have a lot more to learn about, but I'm thankful for the truth in this song. Let's stand together again tonight. 153, God is still on the throne. Hey. 
Have you started for glory in heaven? Have you planned this whole world for me? to the end of the second page, you go back up to the top line and sing those italic words beside the DS, okay? So this is good. Good to have to read the music tonight. On that second, burden soul is your heart growing weary. On the second, burden soul is your heart growing weary with the toil and the heat of the day. So this one does as well. And that gives us great confidence as believers. So let's sing it on the fourth. He is coming again. He is coming again. Is a promise to
seated. Amen. He is still on the throne, no matter what it looks like in our world today. <laughs> the Lord is so good. All right, well, we're thankful for just how God is continuing to bless, and um, we went through a lot of the different things coming up on Sunday. Let me just highlight a, a few things. Number one is the, just our burden coming out of Resurrection Day. We've got to tell folks. We have got to tell folks. And um, that's what the one on the throne wants us to do. And of course, we dealt with that on Sunday, but I do encourage you, if you did not uh, get paired up with someone and are not uh, are, you know, having a real provision to be going out in these weeks, I encourage you to do so. You can even fill a card out even tonight if you need someone uh, to uh, be paired up with. That, by the way, that really helps when you have a partner and uh, you're committed to go together and you're praying. But let's just ask God, first of all, of course, the follow-up. We have great opportunity with the follow-up from the Easter uh, presentations and then just the folks that we all have contact with. Plus, the weather's good enough, we can just go door knocking too. I mean, it's amazing. So uh, thankful for all the opportunities. So I do want to encourage you in that regard. Remember now, next week, let me just quickly go over all that's in the week because I really don't want you to miss anything. It's going to be a great week. On, um, uh, on Tuesday night is our uh, special anniversary concert celebrating our legacy as we highlight the Academy as it's in its 40th year, our music school in its 30th year, and they've been, of course, connected so much together, and uh, the Sharon Lynn Wilson Center for the Arts. And so I do encourage you, if you've not yet signed up, they do have tickets and seating for this, and uh, you can reserve um, uh, your seats if you go online, and uh, that can be taken care of there. And how else can they do it? If, uh, uh, they can just, have, just go to us directly in the office. Yeah, and we'll... we'll Online's the easiest, but uh, that's just the way they want us to do it there. And you can either be main floor or balcony, whatever you'd like. But I encourage you not only to be there, bring folks, and we're looking forward to just a very special time. There'll be a special fellowship time after the service. They've got a wonderful place for that there in the lobby. Just a good time to uh, remember all that the Lord has done. We'll be highlighting the Academy uh, this week, so we look, I mean, this month, so we'll look forward to that. And then uh, we have on Wednesday night, a uh, week from tonight, uh, Brother Sam Wilson again from IBJM, and he's going to do what he did a couple of years ago and go highlight for us the um, Passover meal, how that ties together with the Lord's Supper and just what the Lord did for us. These are things to really get down. Between him and Brother Rotman, we've had some really good teaching on this. We will have the Lord's Supper on Sunday night, and then we have that on Wednesday night. So it should really be a help and a blessing. And um, we'll look forward to him being with us. And then we have our Monroe Parker Lecture Series that we annually have, and that'll be on Friday from 9 till 2, Understanding Israel in Troubled Times. And Brother Wilson is going to be speaking uh, on that. He's the prime, he is the speaker for that. And I do encourage you to, um, uh, to come if you can. Sign up at guest services for that. And uh, uh, that will be very insightful. Believe me, he's very much connected uh, personally to all that's happening. And, uh, and he'll give a full Jewish perspective and give a, some really helpful material. I remember a couple of years ago when he gave material on just how to communicate with someone the gospel that's Jewish. It was such a help. And um, I appreciate just how astute he is in that. And that'll be a tremendous time. I failed to mention at the big uh, 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 legacy concert, uh, we will have uh, Sam Rotman featured that night. And uh, he is just tremendous. That's just going to be a tremendous night of music. And uh, so uh, on Friday, Brother Wilson, and then we'll have our uh, the music school's 30th anniversary dinner gala, and this uh, does cost, and uh, you can purchase tickets also at fallsbaptist.org slash anniversary dinner, and um, 
uh, and uh, it'll be a, a wonderful meal and then tremendous music again with Sam Rotman and uh, we'll look forward to that and the uh, proceeds will go to our, prog our music program and, and that'll just be a big help and we do have uh, some of our village folks coming and I'm thankful for their uh, response to that. Then our men's retreat, gentlemen, if you've not yet signed up, I encourage you to do that tonight as Brother Gaschke is going to be with us and uh, that's going to be a wonderful time and uh, if you've not been to a retreat, men, come. It just is a great time of fellowship. You get to meet other men and all kind of activities that uh, have there. Uh, Camp Joy is on beautiful Lake Whitewater and uh, you'll enjoy the time together and we'll enjoy the preaching. It, You know, those are times in which often in a different way, often God will speak to us, and uh, I do encourage you not to miss that opportunity. And it's also a great opportunity for you to encourage somebody else. All right, like I said, the lots of different things uh, coming up there, so I think that's all I'll mention right now. Uh, as I mentioned on Sunday, Pastor Van wasn't here because of being with the uh, quiz teams going down to uh, the South Carolina meet, which is really the national meet, the concluding one. And, um, well, why don't you say a word about that? I think that'd be encouraging. Monday, I'm losing track of time. It feels like yesterday. So, uh, But what happened on Monday was also just how the Lord's blessed Bible quizzing. Um, here in the academy, and we also have it open to really any young person in our church, but the academy is that which sponsors and organizes it. But I remember when I was a young person, I was about fifth grade, and we had some faithful staff members here that really tried to get Bible quizzing going. We had kind of in and out of it happening, not super seriously, um, but uh, I remember quizzing as, as, as a fifth grader and was just so proud of the fact that I had memorized two chapters, you know. And um, back then, that was a big deal, you know, I thought. Um, but then what happened after that is um, Tom Fuller, who was assistant pastor here, uh, really got seriously going more. And so I got a part of that in high school, enjoyed it. We had some great competitions at state. Uh, never won first place, always came down to the last few questions. Just so many heartbreaks, I remember those. Uh, but uh, it was worth it. Uh, I'll never forget, the Lord teaches you a lot of lessons. I remember one time we were just, just beating the competition. And remember, I think, can't remember the passage that we learned that year, but we were just... It was just 300, 100, I mean, every every time. And we went to lunch, and we put their feet up on the table and said, this is the first year Falls is going to win. He got this one. He looked at us and said, guys, careful. And uh, unfortunately, we, uh, we, that was the death of us, the Lord. The pride goes before destruction, the high spirit before a fall. We ended up losing. Uh, I'll never forget that. That was one of the biggest bummers of my life. But then it was a great lesson learned. So there's a lot of wonderful lessons you learn. Most important is memorizing God's word. Um, but when I graduated from high school, uh, Brother Fuller moved on. To, uh, to missions at the time. And so <clears throat> Brother Schultz became the youth director here. Uh, he, he and I talked, I was burned that quizzing wouldn't stop. He says, I don't know anything about it, but I'm all for you. He said, why don't you run it? And so um, this is actually my personally, my 24th year of coaching. I'm not that old, but that's, that's how, how many years I've been coaching since I started my freshman year of college. And it has been wonderful to see there's in this room, there's dozens of former quizzers and quizzers. And then all around the country, I was with one uh, yesterday, Pastor Ricky Rick Party, somebody I worked with closely in quizzing for years. He was quiz master at the national tournament. Um, they're all over the country. Micah Folkers is actually doing a lot right now nationally to spearhead some encouraging of building more programs. We're already seeing a lot more energy. Um, this year finished the best it's finished in quite a while. Uh, very encouraging. And why is quizzing important to me? It's not because of the competition and having this great. It's because of the intensity that it takes and the effort it really is the young people that learn the word of God. It's not a learn a few verses in a week and then move on to the next and forget. If you do it right and you learn it well, then you do have the, the word of God there for years. And we've been challenged by former quizzers from other ministries, one who's a missionary, faithfully serving now, who, would st who still stands at his, his sink whenever he helps his wife wash dishes or doing it on his own, and he's quoting the passages he memorized 20 years ago. And uh, I've noticed our quizzers have said in college, what a great help, I'm sure, if, had some of them come up right now and give testimonies, they would say how important it was um, in so many ways, spiritually, number one, two, three, four, five, but also even many times the students at even BCM um, especially have, that have really learned how to memorize the Word of God. I believe God's used it in their life, even enabled them to do well in school. And, uh, and so I, I know God honored that in my life. And so I've been encouraged. It is sometimes this year was Matthew. It's a thousand plus verses. 
it's one of those programs, it's one of those passages I call program killers, you know. <laughs> it's so big. It can be very discouraging if not uh, tackled the right way. And, uh, and so I just want to say how thankful I am for the young people of this church um, who many of them worked diligently, worked hard, and we really had a good year. They, this year, we've had good years since 21, since just put this in perspective, since 2021, uh, this tournament, 2021, we have actually, God's been good, we've not lost a tournament. You would say, well, where's the competition? It's there. Uh, it's been down a little bit because quizzing is rebuilding. But this tournament that we were just at was the toughest tournament overall. We had three teams go, and um, there were 11 teams, but they were from coast to coast in multiple states. It was really a good field. And our th our team three ended up getting ninth place. They won the consolation round, the, top, the bottom three teams. Uh, and But I'm actually, this is one year I'm not ashamed of that placement because – the teams above them, they, they could have beaten them, but they were strong. And that means that the field was much deeper when it comes to the amount of verses that young people had learned. So anyway, so we ended up having the, the two teams that were left in the competition without a loss were Falls. Falls, two other teams, uh, that our t the one team, the two, two, two teams. We called them Lightning and Thunder, um, just to differentiate. But what happened was, is it came down to the end, the uh, last four teams were left, and we ended up, a team from Colorado that had for years not been good, is, was very strong this year, and we ended up giving them fourth place. Then our, th our second team got third place, and then ended up being another Wisconsin round. I don't know what it is, it's for years now, it seems like McGuanagan Falls. 30 minutes down the street from each other, we're quizzing in South Carolina for championships, you know, it just, just seems to happen. But we're still friends, by the way. Um, I think so, because we keep, we, we keep winning, so it's easy for me to say. Uh, but, uh, but, but anyway, so, um, but, but, they, uh, but they were tremendous. They have some young quizzers that quiz great. And we ended up, it was a dogfight all the way to the end. And our young people just stayed in it. And uh, we had some surprise jumps, right, Nathan? That was awesome there. <laughs> kind of gave the team a good spark there uh, on, on that final quiz. So we just had a great time. But spiritually, we were blessed. Great time at Fellowship Baptist. Grateful for what God's doing there. We heard a wonderful evangelist preach uh, while we were there. And just it was just the most spiritually edifying trip. I appreciate your prayer uh, regarding safety. Never take that for granted. Uh, but it was just, it was a special time. I just want to, the reason I took a little longer is because this is a special month of our 40th anniversary. Quizzing has been a part of our school, church, for 30 plus years of that. And as I see scores of young people I've had the privilege of working with, I, I just can't speak enough about how God's used it in my life and seen what God's done in their life. And if you were to get a group of Bible quizzers, I see some of them right now. If I said, guys, let's get in the car right now. We've got to drive an hour. We've got to go somewhere together for you know, maybe a two of the event that our church is having, if I got them in the van, that would be the most energetic hour of discussion, even with people removed for 15 years from it, because they know the life change that happened in their life through Bible memory. So I'm grateful for what God's done through quizzing and very grateful for this, this past weekend. And now we're heading into Hebrews and First and Second Peter. So we're thankful for that. Well, I'm glad it took a little time on it. It is, it is something to be as consistent as our, our program has been for, this, this, uh, for these last couple of years plus for them to win, it, win every major tournament has been uh, uh, just a real credit to you parents and teachers and all the leaders. And I think sometimes we take those things for granted. But I tell you what, if you go to quizzes, it's uh, it's heart stopping um, what they go through and appreciate all of the support and all the work that has been done. All right, let's stand for prayer. It's good to see Brother Bron Williams here. He is, uh, oh, what do we call you? Evangelist, revivalist, uh, preacher, uh, all kinds of things. He's all across the, and of course the grandfather of uh, my grandchildren uh, from the Williams side over there. Why don't you come up here, brother, if you would, and uh, lead us in prayer. Thankful for your faithful ministry over these many years. Let's pray together. Father, we thank thee for the promise of thy presence. We thank thee for the presence of elect angels. And Lord, bless us tonight as we're in the midst of all these saints and what the Word of God has shared with us, help us each one according to our need. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
Wonderful song tonight, even with the theme of the service about God still being on the throne. One thing I failed to mention uh, was that uh, when, I, when I was a freshman in college and we were down at national competition and our quiz team had for the first time ever won a state competition, I remember standing, uh, people didn't really know me at that in the quizzing world at that point because I, I just started coaching and never had been a national meet. I remember standing there by the brackets and we had just won the team, we had just beaten the team that had won nationals the year before and really surprised ourselves and everybody else, you know. And I remember standing there, just people were, they were writing the names up of who had gotten where. And I remember hearing somebody say, Falls Baptist, what's up with that? And, um, and then I heard another man say, well, I'm not surprised. He said the testimony of that school for years has been quality young people. And we had been there for years for different competitions when I was in high school and, and uh, even high schoolers older than me you know, the years before, and I just want to say how much I'm thankful for the years of investment of our faculty and staff, and uh, in, in, in our young people, those who over the years have served at this church and this, in this academy, I just, that, that, that thought came to my mind. I remember just standing there, I just, I didn't say any, any, anything, I didn't make, make myself known at that moment. All I did was stood there, I didn't get proud, I just said, thank you, Lord, for what you've given me, and, and the blessing of, of the church, our pastor, and the young people that, we've had over the years so anyway i'm just thankful that it's continuing on and the testimony of our kids was good uh was strong and uh and it was great we've actually developed some good relationships with some of the other ministries through through quizzing it's been very very good 149 in your psalm book 149 the song that's entitled my father watches over me we sang this uh, i think two or three months ago and i thought it would just fit again in this service we'll just sing the first and the last stanzas of this song and again God is still on the throne and we can trust the fact that God the Father does watch over us so um, this song is a little bit harder to sing sitting down so let's stand up if you would 149 I trust in God Tonight we're going to look at the prayer of Nehemiah. Turn with me please to Nehemiah chapter 1. As we again look at the prayers we find in the scripture, we're doing it basically chronologically. We did change the order over the Easter season. But we're looking here at the book of Nehemiah. It's amazing how God encouraged his people during the time of the exile and even of the time of the restoration back to the land, it still was a very difficult day. But right in the middle of those powerful empires, the Babylonian Empire and the Medo-Persian Empire, you have Daniel, first of all, 
uh, coming to great power and frankly becoming the second in power in Babylon. And it's my uh, understanding and conviction that Daniel during the time of Nebuchadnezzar's insanity actually ruled the mighty Babylonian empire, a powerful empire. Can you imagine how encouraging that was to the uh, Jewish people uh, there during the captivity? To have a godly uh, Jewish man in that kind of a position. Then you have uh, Daniel with the, going right to the top in the Babylonian arena under the Medo-Persian Empire. Later, you had, because of uh, Mordecai's faith in the Lord and rearing his daughter Esther properly, God sovereignly put her in the palace. And uh, then, because of, the, of her faith and Mordecai's stand for God, Mordecai becomes second in, in power uh, to the Medo-Persian Empire. And another amazing thing, and now you have Nehemiah, who some believe had, even though he's called cupbearer, that was a very strategic position, one that was very close to the king, Artaxerxes, and uh, very possibly he may have had a prime minister type of position. And so what an encouragement. And yet in the midst of this, things were very challenging for the Jewish people. Uh, Nehemiah uh, was, in the ancient, uh, was in the Persian capital of Susa in 445 B.C. And uh, he um, was burdened about Jerusalem, which had been destroyed 141 years before under Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, when that had occurred, Nebuchadnezzar, I mean, he, he thoroughly uh, did the bidding of God in totally ju uh, judging the nation of Israel, of course, Judah at that time. And the inhabitants were taken off. Judah was burned. The temple uh, and the walls were totally destroyed. And the massive uh, stones that went around the city were thrown down into the Kidron Valley. Uh, and it was just a tragic, tragic um, uh, situation. And now, all these years later, even though Israel had come back, uh, according to the prophecy of Jeremiah, back into the land, that's what Daniel was praying about, still the city had not been fully rebuilt. Trees were growing up and, you know, where the walls were. And I mean, it, it was a disgrace to the testimony of the Lord. And remember, uh, the Lord said that if Israel would not follow the Lord, that he would destroy the temple and that he would destroy the city and people would look and wonder what happened and well it's God judging his own people. So this is a very emotional issue uh, to those who really love the Lord and the key to Nehemiah was that even though he was in a very powerful position he saw it as God's supernatural intervention, and I'm, I doesn't say it directly, but you can tell in his spirit, he saw himself as a servant of the Lord. That term is used several times here. And that he was, um, his burden was uh, the situation that went, was going on in Jerusalem. The name of Jehovah God was in disgrace, even with the remnant going back. And that's what you find when Hanani comes back, one of his brethren, verse 2 of chapter 1, having been in Jerusalem, uh, verse 3, and they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Now, the next verse is key, but you've got to understand Nehemiah had already have a heart for the testimony of the Lord for this report to have touched him like this. Uh, you know, prayer, folks, is only as effective as our burden is for the glory of God. Prayer that is primarily self-focused, though God wants us to pray about our daily needs, prayer that is outside of the uh, context of 
our lives being for the purpose of seeing his work go forward and his glory being lifted up, those kind of prayers are going to get lost in the selfishness of, of our lives. And so Nehemiah clearly had not fallen to the cushy life that he had or the power that he had. He, he had a relationship with God. And we read in verse 4, And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And so his deep burden here was the testimony of God that was undermined by the lack of faith of those that were in Jerusalem and, of course, the, all the tragedy that had occurred before. And so let me just read through this prayer, and then I want to make a, just one major point here. If you look with me now at verse 5, and I said, I beseech thee, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Folks, let me just say that's a tremendous verse for a man who is living in the powerful center of the Medo-Persian Empire looking at his own home city uh, that was a disgrace. And yet he is saying here, you are the great God of heaven. Uh, you are great and, and you have great power and you keep your covenant and mercy with them that love him. In other words, Nehemiah believed God's word over what he saw and how he felt. Now, folks, that is so important when it comes to prayer. He gives a declaration. That's why it is so important in our prayer times to have that time of praise in which we declare in our own hearts who God is based upon the word of God. And my friends, it'll make a lot of difference when you get down to some of the difficulties in your life when you really believe that God is who he said he is even though things around you don't look like it's going, that they're going well. My friend, God is still on the throne as I said earlier even though we don't like what's happening in our country or around the world. Uh, and he will keep his promises. He is the God of heaven. And uh, so that, that is a tremendous uh, statement by Nehemiah. And then he gets into his request, and let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant. You see the relationship that Nehemiah had, which I pray before thee now day and night. This was not just a quick prayer, though Nehemiah had some quick prayers we're going to see. He was uh, very deeply fasting and praying for the condition of Israel, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. Doesn't that sound like Daniel? You know, you, you can't find anything wrong with Daniel in the scripture. And frankly, Nehemiah's testimony is tremendous. But uh, they were sinners just like anyone else. And there was a brokenness, an understanding of the, the need for the mercy of God. We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments nor the statutes nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. This is why the Jerusalem was in the mess that it was. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest the servant, thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations, referring back to the curses of the book of Deuteronomy. Moses, of course, the human author of the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, he's uh, saying very clearly, we have transgressed thy word. Now, uh, folks, let me just say this. Every word that God gives us is important. And there are consequences for taking God's words, word lightly. Yeah, God does mean what he says. That's a whole other message in itself. And uh, we need to understand that God is not going to bless with us picking and choosing what we're going to do and not do. And, uh, and look what happened here to Israel. But, verse 9, if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Lord, you said this. You not only said that you would judge and chasten 
the nation of Israel, if they went against his well, word, but if they would turn and repent and come back to a full loyalty to you, that you would bring them back to the place that, uh, well, that you have chosen to have thy name uh, there. And so he's, he's basing this on, his, on the word of God. Verse 10, now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper. And I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. Now that's an interesting ending to the prayer. So much I could say about all that I just read. He didn't just say amen after verse, uh, middle of verse 11. No, very clearly in this prayer, he has a plan. Very clearly, he is understanding that God had put him in this wonderful place of authority for a reason. And he sees that there are those who love the Lord who have turned to him and he is crying out on behalf of them and he's saying, Lord, would you keep your promise? It is your name. We are your people. Now, Lord, give me mercy in the sight of this man. Who's this man? It's the king of Medo-Persia. I was his. I was the king's cupbearer. So he realized, just like Esther, that she had come to the kingdom for such a time as this. The thing that I want to mention here, and we'll look just for a final moment at the next chapter, is that there is there's oomph to this prayer. There's passion to this prayer. Because Nehemiah was surrendering himself to be the instrument to answer that prayer. Folks, it's one thing to pray for revival, but are you willing to sacrifice for it? It's one thing to pray, Lord, give us a number of souls, but are we willing to be the, one of the people that God is using to accomplish that purpose? Or excuse me, or whatever situation that we're, we're burdened about, one of the keys to praying is, Lord, let me be part of the answer. And many times God will give clarity as to how that answer should be accomplished by our willingness uh, to pray. Well, it was some weeks later. He was patient. He didn't rush. He was not doing his own agenda. Uh, chapter 2, And it came to pass in the month Nisan in the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him, and I took the wine and gave it before the king. Now, I had not been before time sad in his presence. You never made a king in the Oriental, those, the, the emperors, you never let them be sad. They were always to be happy. So this was a very, very dangerous thing. But evidently, he was following the Lord in not masking how he felt. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. And so he says, Well, good. Now I'm getting an answer to prayer. <laughs> no, he's very human, just like all of us. I was scared to death. That's a new interpretation there of that. Uh, uh, then I was sore afraid. See, he knew at the end of verse 11 of chapter 1. Lord, I need mercy in the sight of this man because you didn't mess with these guys. And the, he could have had his head chopped off in chapter 2. And said unto the king, let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchers, liest wait, waste, and the gates there are consumed with fire? So he makes it very clear, my burden is for my people. My burden is for, uh, for uh, the testimony of my people. Then the king said unto to me, this is a miracle, for what dost thou make request? And note here, so 
I, may, I prayed to the God of heaven. Before he said something, he, he was so in the presence of God and had prayed so long and so fervently that he was in full communication and he could say, Lord, lead me right now. Really, the history of Israel is going to be <clears throat> um, very much determined by what I say at this point. And so uh, he asks an audacious, has an audacious request because God told him after he prayed. And I said unto the king, if it please the king and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchers, that I may build it. Wow, leave his position. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, for how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. And it was obviously quite a lengthy period. Moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, let letters be give, uh, given me to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me o over till I come unto Judah. And a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace, which appertain to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand or the prayer that God had given to him, the, his good hand upon him. Oh, there's so many things that could be said. But when we yield ourselves at great risk many times to do what God tells us to do, and uh, the word of the God is very clear according to his written word, then God will give us uh, the heart to pray big prayers. You know, when we pray little prayers and it's just, Lord, if thy will be done, we're missing something. When we pray and ask God for wisdom, he will give wisdom and he will give us his perspective on what to pray. Friends, how much have we not asked for that God has wanted us to ask? And I think a lot of it's, number one, uh, we're not in tune with him as much as we should so that he can lead us into praying that kind of a prayer. And secondly, we're not surrendered to do what God would have us to do. Uh, according to the wisdom that he gives us uh, in that prayer. And so um, many, many thoughts here. But prayer is, should be an active relationship with God in which uh, we are realizing whatever we have, God is wanting our lives to count. And Nehemiah understood he had come to the kingdom for a time such as this. You have come to the kingdom. You are in the church age at this point to be used of God, every person here. And we need to be in an interactive relationship with God to see what he wants. We ought to be jealous for his cause. His glory ought to be our burden. And I, will, I tell you what, God will give you leadership to pray prayers that will take your breath away, but you'll know they're God. And God wants to use every one of us, but it, you have to have that kind of relationship. So a lot to be said, but I trust I'll encourage your heart in uh, letting God lead and guide you in prayer. Well, let's continue to pray here in these final few minutes uh, for the, um, uh, the follow-up to our Easter program. I am convinced that there are folks right there that could be reached. Uh, the Lord definitely was working in both of the services, and so uh, let's pray that God will work. Uh, Let's ask God just to lead us to pray what he wants us to pray in these days ahead. Uh, God wants to work. And I am really burdened um, to see somebody, uh, some Jewish person saved over these next few weeks. We've asked God for that. And God just keeps bringing these men that are burdened for the Jewish people back to us. And uh, can we have a, can't God lead us to an audacious prayer about that? I heard one of a uh, pastor friend gave me the testimony that I uh, had the privilege about two or three months ago of leading a Jewish man about 40 years of age to the Lord. It was such a miracle. Worked on him for about three years. And the man came to his office and said, I'm ready. And got on his knees and just wept and got saved. Top professional, owns a company. And uh, that's what God can do. And so that's just another burden. So let's take these last minutes here and seek the Lord.